to him today and just say thank you for keeping your promise to me Lord thank you for keeping your promise to us today to be the covenant keeping God hallelujah
the Lord. Amen. Do you have a reason to praise the Lord tonight? So, I love this Psalms. Psalms 150, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Hasn't he been a good God? Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the song tree and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Does anybody have a tambourine? Shake that tambourine. Praise him with the sweet instruments and organs.
give glory to you, Jesus, because you sit on the throne, Jesus. You reign and you rule, Jesus. So one more time, we lift up our hands and we give you glory. We give you glory and honor because for your pleasure we were created. So we turn around and we give you glory and honor to the one who's seated on the throne. He deserves our glory and worship. So as we close this session, just one more time, lift up those hands to the Lord and wave it to him. Tell him you deserve the glory, God. You deserve the honor for my life. In my life be glorified. In all that I do and all that I say, let my life bring you glory. Let my life give you praise. Come on, clap those hands if you mean it. given and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all a generation just in case you don't know this is going to be a worshiping weekend. Not so much we come to spectate, speculate, criticize, find fault. This is not the weekend for that. Amen. If you fall short of his glory, this week is the week for you to find that place and be restored. So that we are not one-sided. Some spiritual, some half spiritual, not quite spiritual. Some loving God, some doesn't seem to love him that much. I am believing God that by the power of the Holy Spirit, if you are a Christian, then we will all be on the same wavelength. If you're a Christian, we are going to praise our God together there will be no distraction but we'll keep our eyes on Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith the Bible said who for the joy that was set before him enduring the cross despising the shame but look what happened after all that Having gone through all that, the Bible says, seated on the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for us. Aren't you glad you know the Lord tonight? 
Are you hearing me back there? Are you hearing me in the audience? Amen. Then I need a response. There's a song that said, I will not go silent. I will worship the Lord, worship only you. As long as I am breathing. Well, I don't need to ask because based on science, if you are not breathing, you're dead. So I'm not going to really ask. There's some questions that are a little bit ridiculous. Because I can look and I see no dead people physically. There may be some spiritually. But physically, everybody look as if we are alive. As long as I am breathing, I will worship the Lord. I'm not going to do too much of the greeting portion because we have our public relations personnel line up to do that. So we're not going to duplicate. We're just going to go flow with the spirit. Do you feel his presence? Now tell, tell me the truth. Do you feel his presence? I know get to a point that you can't even talk to your neighbor next to you in church because you don't know who you're going to upset because this lady on, on YouTube she doesn't want to be disturbed when she goes to church amen if you want to upset her tell her to turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor I love you but I don't know what's wrong with that amen your neighbor need to know that I love you Amen. My face doesn't look that way, but I love you. Hello, somebody. Don't judge me by the way I look. Because some people look a little bit different. And that upsets some people. I don't like the way you look at me. Amen. All that we're going to pass. All that we're going to overlook. But we're going to look to Jesus. We need something from him. Is anybody here tonight? Longing, looking for something extraordinary, something different from the norm. You know how church runs. A few songs, a testimony, a collection of the offering, a message, and we dismiss. I need to see more than that this weekend. I need to see the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I need him to place conviction on the church of God again. I need somebody to work with me. I know the Holy Ghost is ready. Amen. Jesus said, yes, he will testify of me. So we can't shut up the Holy Ghost. He knows his purpose. He will testify. If you don't want to talk about Jesus, the Holy Ghost will. But we're going to join with him tonight. We are going to have, I'm not sure if we should say a good time. Or just, just a common way of saying things. We're going to have a good time. But we're going to have a moving of the Holy Spirit. A shaking up by the Holy Spirit. A waking up by the Holy Spirit. A stirring up by the Holy Spirit. An endowment of power by the Holy Spirit. Somebody's going to be baptized. Somebody's going to be restored. Somebody will get back the praise. Hallelujah. Let me stop right now. Because if you feel the way I'm feeling, boy, it's going to be some noise in this place. If you feel the way I'm feeling, it's going to be some worshiping in this place. If you feel the way I'm feeling, there's going to be some shouting in this place. Hallelujah. If you feel what I'm feeling, we cannot agree that the presence of the Lord is here. I can feel his mighty power. When the Holy Ghost comes with power, when the Holy
Holy Ghost shall come. You will have, you shall have power. Somebody shout power. That noise, that noise, that noise, but power. Noise, but you're empty. You can make a lot of noise, but you're empty. But we are not gonna make the empty noise in this place. Hallelujah! There's gonna be a vibration. Oh, praise the Lord! Somebody wave your hand. Somebody wave your hand and agree and say yes. It's about time. Yes. It's about time for the pouring of the Holy Ghost. I need to feel him all over me. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We prayed. We prayed. We prayed. Long prayers, weeks of intercessory praying. My God, what a God. Amen. That we are talking to him, praying all this time, and he hasn't budged. The devil is a liar. Call on me. That's what he told me. That's what he told you. Call on me. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. And I will show you. I love that part. And I will show you. And I'm looking with expectancy. With expectation. God, you said it. God, you said it. If I call on you, you will answer me. And you will show me. Show me. Great. And mighty things. I look, oh, praise God. Lord, I feel the anointed. 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 Welcome, Holy Spirit. Oh, God. Amen. What of relations. Where are you? Come, part of relations. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Great God. You deserve a great praise. How many know that God deserves a great praise in this house tonight? Don't look at the person beside you or how they are looking, but a great God deserves a great praise. Can we hear the praises this night? Can we just give God a praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, we greet you in Jesus' name. Bless the name of the Lord. My name is Sister Sandra Tape, and I have Sister Alicia with me, who will be welcome you tonight in the house of God. And you see, I do smile, so I want to see some smile in this house. All right? I want to welcome you all tonight in this house as we join to worship along with our bishop, our district supervisor, and our first lady chambers. We want to tell you tonight that you are welcome in this house. First Lady Chambers, can you wave to this congregation tonight? Wave like they see Lady Chambers. 
Bless the name of the Lord. So good that you're here with us tonight and worshiping. And the team that we're using, the Carrollton Call. And as we gather tonight, for those that are listening to over on our Facebook page and over YouTube, we want to tell you that you are welcome worshiping with us tonight. And we hope that you will be blessed after leaving this platform tonight. I want to say special welcome to all our ministers, our pastors, and, and their wives. I want to welcome you all in the house tonight. All our churches, family that are here tonight, we welcome you. At my local church, I used just to say, it's so good to see you tonight. How about you turn to your neighbor and say, it's so good to see you tonight. Can you do that? Just do that little exercise for me. It's so good. It's so good. Turn to somebody behind you. Turn to somebody beside you and say, it's so good to see you tonight. Worship team, we thank God for you. Musicians, we thank God for you too. You've been a blessing. You've enhanced the worship tonight and we thank God. For all our special guests in the house tonight. Tonight we have Pastor Lola Beckford and Deacon Beckford. Can you stand and you are from Queens, but now you are in the Bronx. Can we give them a round of applause tonight? Hallelujah. We welcome you. And you know, Pastor Beckford and Deacon Beckford, you're always welcome to worship with us. Thank you for being with us tonight. We also have Minister Stacy. Is she somewhere? I know I see her come in. And she's from the Bronx, from Brooklyn. Yes. Is there anybody else from Brooklyn in the house tonight? Oh my God. Minister Stacy, we welcome you. Glad you are here to worship with us. I also have Sister Dawn Baxter, who is the regional director of the Hushers. She's working, but we welcome you. We welcome you in the house tonight. And we just do hope you will have a great time. You take your time to be here, and we want to let you know that we really appreciate you coming to join with us here in Queens and Long Island. A great family to be with. Amen? Come on, Queens and Long Island. A great family to be with. God bless you as you worship with us and all the members and everyone. We bless God for you joining with us. No wonder the writer said, I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. You know that you are wonderful. And may God bless you tonight. I love you. I love you. And as we continue, we have a little house cleaning to do. And we're going to make some little announcement that we have to do. Things that are happening tomorrow. And I'm going to ask Sister Lisa to go straight ahead. Go ahead. To empower us as we awaken to the call of God on our lives to reach the world all around us. We will be using the facility across the street. All workshops will be held at 10 a.m. Church Ann's building is across the street. And someone will direct you to go across the street, and that will be Minister Blackwood. And uh, he will usher everyone across the street when the classes begin. And for those who are not going to the worship can stay in the main building where there will be prayer. Our classes that we have, the workshops that we have in our community, for our church and our community, will be Pastor Conrad Barnett from Axe Institute. And also we'll be having a wonder, wondering how to evangelize to, our, to a neighbor co-worker or friend 
to join us. The Relational Evangelism Workshop will be held by Minister Peter Mitchell. Also, the ideas for YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, all social media pages. Join us to our technology workshop with Brother Andre Palmer. And this will be taken tomorrow. Also, we want to remind you that please do not double park, okay? No double parking, please. And Saturday, lunch will be served downstairs. We will be having fish dinners for $20, brown stew for $15, and also curry chicken for $15. And that will be all of our announcements, and we just have one more thing. All right, also, there's another workshop that we have, and it's the workshop for those who want to work in Alta Call. And this will be by Minister Nathaniel Blackwood. All right, so bear that in mind. Also, one of our teachers from the Acts Bible Institute. All right, so may God bless you all tonight. We're going to sit back and relax. We also have a greetings from our regional overseer and lady Greenaway. And we're going to be just sitting back and relaxed right now as they bring us greetings. Greetings to the Queens and Long Island District, our family and blessings to you. We're so sorry that we cannot be with you this weekend, but we thank God that his presence is with you as you celebrate uh, your convention um, in your district convention revival. Uh, the worship already is exciting. The pre-convention has been a blessing. And I know that the Lord will continue to bless you as you celebrate. We do want to give honor to our district bishop, Bishop Carlton Chambers, and to Lady Rocklitha Chambers for the great work that they are doing. And I know that during this convention, there'll be a special time to honor them and appreciate them for their hard work. They have a passion uh, for this ministry, a passion to see the work go on, to go higher and to go stronger. So the Lord bless you as you celebrate, uh, not just tick it off on the list, but we celebrate and leave this convention uh, determined to do more for the Lord as we see uh, the end of uh, these last days and his coming is near at hand. God bless you. We miss you. We love you. Celebrate and magnify the Lord. Amen. Blessings on you, Queens and Long Island. Sure wish that we could be with you this year. Sorry that we cannot be, but we give God praise for his presence with you in this convention. Greetings to our district bishop, Bishop Carlton Chambers and Lady Chambers. God bless you as we celebrate the Lord together. Convention is a time of celebrating the goodness of the Lord. Amen. And I like uh, the theme um, this year, the clarion call, the night is approaching, reminding us of the urgency of the times in which we live. We don't have much time um, to do what we called upon to do. No time to waste, no time to play. This is time for revival. Amen. This is time to get on with the work. Uh, the scripture passage from which the theme is taken states, I must work the works of him that sent me Amen. while it is day. Jesus said, the night cometh when no man can work. And in some versions, this passage is pluralized. We must work the works of him that sent us mm -hmm. while it is day. We are on a mission. The Church of God is on a mission yes. to win as many as we can in these last days. And may God help us. We thank you for the reports that are coming in. Many have been saved and sanctified and filled. Mm -hmm. And many have been baptized. Uh, report after report. And I thank God thank for God. what he is doing in Queens and Long Island. Sorry that we can't be there this year, uh, but the presence of the Lord is with you. Celebrate the goodness of the Lord mm -hmm. every day. 
is a day of thanksgiving. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, let us have church in this convention and make great and mighty miracles take place in the name of the Lord. God bless you and have the best convention revival in Jesus' name. Thank you, Bishop. Hallelujah. That's coming from her regional overseer. Also, as we go, there is someone here, Sister Kayla. She is from Delaware, and she's here worshiping with us. Kayla, where you are, just stand. All right, Kayla, God bless you. She's coming all the way from Delaware. So we welcome you. And we just hope you'll have a great time. God bless you. Church, God bless you. And you have yourself a great night. And remember, a great God deserve a great praise. God bless you. Thank you, Paula Prelation. Moving right along, we're going to have our theme hymn. And after the theme hymn will be the exhortation by our uh, sister Valinda Brown. And we, we still keep our eyes on the Lord. Don't take your eyes off him. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Great things. <laughs> Come on, tell your neighbor, send the light. Tell your neighbor, send the light. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's rejoice in the Lord with this song tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap those hands.
receive our minister. Pray much for her. God will use her mightily to bring forth his word. Thank God. Psalms 34 and verse 1 said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall forever be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Giving honor to our Northeast Regional Bishop, Dr. Greenaway and Le Lady Greenaway in their absence. To our Queens and Long Island District Supervisor, Bishop Chambers and Lady Chambers and families to our bishop, pastor, deacon, ministers, and their spouses, and to our visiting pastor and her spouse, on all the other guests and brothers and sisters, those are viewing via live stream greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Amen? Amen? Okay, the scripture that I will be reading from is Matthew 24 and verse 10 coming from the KJV Virgin. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Hallelujah. The topic that I was speaking on, when your night has come, the door has closed. The overall theme of this convention is the Claritin call, the night is approaching. There is a spiritual alarm sounding in the spiritual realm. The church needs to be in a state of readiness for the coming of our Lord. When is an adverb, it gives the information about the manner with which something is about to happen. And verse 6 of chapter 25 states that it will be at midnight. It is customary for us to keep our door closed at night. Spiritually, when a door is closed, that someone is, when a door is closed, what that means, someone it implies that someone did not accept the message of the gospel which is preached. Noah preached for, to the world for 120 years. And only his families and the creatures, all male and females of every kind, were able to enter into the ark. Genesis 7, 6, states that the Lord shut him in. Revelation 3 and verse 7, the angel of the law, the angel of the church of Philadelphia wrote these things, saying... He that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, no man shutteth, he that shutteth, no man openeth. There is be no backstage passes. One way in. The gospel is written, was written by John, one of Jesus' disciples to the Jews, knowing the Jews were reluctant to use God's name, lest they use it in vain, Exodus 20, verse 7. There are 23 parables in this gospel. What is a parable? A brief narrative story told with earthly analogies to illustrate moral or spiritual truths. Some theologians suggested that this entire portion of Matthew relates exclusively to eschological event. Matthew 25 is known as the exhortation to God's people to be watchful for his coming event mentioned in chapter 24. These passages are also known as the Olivet Discourse. This discourse is written for the disciples and the believers in Christ. Chapter 24 and verse 3, Jesus is responding. What shall be the coming and the end of the world? At the end of the world, Jesus gave several descriptions throughout these two chapters. This text is an admonition to the believers living before the 
tribulation to be spiritually ready for the unexpected unknown coming of Christ, which is the rapture of the church. This is the first stage of the coming of the Son of Man. In this period, the resurrection of the dead and those that are in Christ will be raptured. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 6, the second stage, will be after the tribulation when he will destroy all the wicked and gather all the righteous into his kingdom. Amen? There are two main views of this parable. One, the Lord is dealing exclusively with Israel. Second, the Lord is dealing with the present age church. And the church is in his view. 24 chap chapter 25 begins with the kingdom of heaven is like unto ten virgins. The ten virgins represent the remnant of Israel after the church is taken. The five wise were believing remnant and the five foolish were unbelieving remnant who professed to be looking for the coming Messiah. As believers, it is very crucial that we maintain a state of readiness. Thank you. That we maintain a state of readiness and we must be constant looking for our, to our, on our spiritual condition in light of the coming of Christ, which I said before, it is unknown and it will be unexpected. We must preserve that on that day or that hour of the bridegroom, we the believers must be in a situation where we will be received by our Lord. The Claritin call is echoing this weekend that there is going to be a midnight cry. The door is about to close. The Bible said the door was shut. This shut door is indication that the marriage ceremony is in session and the bride is walking down the aisle towards the groom. The illustration of the ten virgins showed that they all have lamps and they all went out to meet the bridegroom. Please note that five took no oils in their lamps and five wives took oil in their lamp. They waited for a while. Eventually, they all slumbered and slept. There was a cry at midnight. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him. All ten, listen, all ten was taken by surprise at the coming of the bridegroom. They all rose up. They all trimmed their lamps. For, and eventually the five foolish realized they did not have enough oil. The wise, they, eventually they asked the wise, may I have some of your oil? They respond, no, 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 not so. It's not enough. Go buy. Of course, the foolish went and buy some oils. They had a form of godliness. That's why they missed the bridegroom. <laughs> Salvation is a gift. The wages of sin is death. For, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus paid it all at Calvary by the shedding of his blood. And he and the Holy Ghost is a gift from God the Father. He is our teacher. He is our deserter of all things. He helped us not to be carried away by every wind of doctrine, by not compromising to the things of this world. The one of the stages of justification is being justified before God comes by his grace and which is appropriated by faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. We must be faithful in our personal walk with Jesus Christ. We must not fail to be faithful because he is coming back again. The door of the kingdom is about to open. Let us be faithful. Both the faithful and the unfaithful were taken by surprise. What's the difference which the foolish to recognize the Lord's return? What's the difference between the wise and the faithful? 
John 14 and verse 3 said, I go prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. Sometimes we lack patience. We don't want to wait. Hallelujah. This is an indication that a large portion of the church will be unprepared for the coming of the Lord. You turn to your right and turn to your left. Hallelujah. The scripture makes it clear that Christ will not wait for the churches to prepare for his coming. The alarm is sounding and the master is calling. Hallelujah. Before the door is closed, check your oil level. What's your spiritual lamp? Is it empty or is it full? What is your spiritual condition? Is it lukewarm like the church of Laodicea? Is the church compromising with the world and resembling the surrounding society? Is the church professing Christ but does not know him or in a wretched state spiritually? Revelation 3 and verse 17. Christ is inviting the church to repent and be restored to a place of righteousness, faithfulness, and fellowship. Before he closes the door, he is knocking at our hearts. Will we receive him? True believers will persevere in faith and are overcomers during spiritual opposition. Once the door is closed, the invitation to be Christ's bride will be no more. And you will be left behind. Jeremiah 8, 20, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. I pray that this will not be our cry tonight. The closed door, according to the text, will be shut before Israel is converted until the fullness of the Gentile, the church will be completed. After which Israel will be saved. You and I cannot determine the time when that door will be closed. Those who are ready to be with Christ in this marriage supper before the entrance is denied. Just a reminder that the master of the house has, will rise up. The scripture said the master of the house risen up and has shut the door. Luke 13 and verse 25. Foolish virgin came back saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. He answered and said, I know you not. Revelation 3, 7 to 10 speak of a faithful church, Philadelphia. They kept the word of Christ. They did not deny him. They went through great opposition from the world. And by not conforming to the evil threats of the opposing churches, they were loyal to Christ and his gospel message. Are you loyal tonight? And their faithfulness, knowing that God promised to deliver them from the hours of trials. Night is approaching, church. The door is about to close. There's a phrase that say, fake it until you make it. Not for this one. No, 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 no. Tell your neighbor, not for this one. Okay? You can't fake it. Anything with God, you can't fake it. It was the Lord himself that closed the door of the ark. And it will be the Lord himself that's going to close the door at the wedding feast. When God closes the door, no man can open it. This wedding is not an ordinary wedding that we are used to. Being late for a wedding ceremony and you can attend the reception. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The oil of the la in the lamp represents the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost in this hour. The Holy Ghost will help us to stay in position of readiness. Is there any oil in your lamp? Both wise and the foolish virgin receive the invitation. We are all receiving the invitation today. We must be ready. Hallelujah. To meet the bride, half went in and half did not. Isaiah 55 and verse 6 says, Seek he the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Now is the time of the promised possession. Now is not the hour to lose faith 
our consciousness. Hallelujah. We must not lose faith or consciousness in this season. Night is approaching. Get in position. You want to hear, welcome, good and faithful servant. Don't allow, allow the door to be closed on us while we are standing outside. It will be too late. Judgment come. If we abide in him, he will abide in us. Therefore, when the trumpet sounds, we will be among the numbers that will be raptured or caught up to meet him in the air. I leave you with this. 1940, John M. Space, Angel M. Space wrote this song titled, Heaven Jubilee. Some glad morning, we shall see, some glad morning, we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there shall be when the saints shall rise. Headed for the jubilee yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing. Oh, what shouting. Hallelujah. Oh, what happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. Hallelujah. When we meet the blessed Savior in the skies. Hallelujah, church. You are the church. Do not allow the door to be closed and you are left outside. God bless you. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. I'm not sure. I am not sure if we are thinking. What is this carrot call all about? Because he loves the church. And he knows if he were to come tonight, too many of us will be left behind. You know who you are. We don't single people out. We don't tell you that you're a good Christian, you're a bad Christian. Every person needs to know your spiritual condition. But if he were to come tonight, but he's not coming tonight. That's why he's sending out the signal. Get ready. Some people are telling you it's fallacy. No such thing. He will never return. But the church is getting herself ready. Amen. Thank God. Again, it's just amazing. After you have given such a, a, a striking announcement that at the end of your conversation or your statement, you would say, he who has ears to hear. And I believe that I don't want to be, you know, one not to be positive about this region that we will allow the enemy to deafen our ears he's not talking to me but I pray that every one of us that are believers will say speak Lord I'm listening I'm listening it's time for worship our pastor Shorter will come and he will do the boosting and you will do the giving. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Shall we praise the Lord, church? Shall we praise him again? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord is here with us this afternoon. And we are here to rejoice and to give him praise and to give him honor. This is not, uh, just, a, this is not just a regular meeting. This is convention. 
And there are so much things happening in convention. Amen. I'm blessed by the, I want to call this an exhortation. It's a message. And it's an end time message. And these are messages that we want to hear in convention. Amen. I am blessed. How about you? Amen. God bless you, Sister Brown. It's offering time, and I know whenever I'd come to this time, even if we were jumping high, we slow down. Uh, we don't want to do anything because we have to give. Amen. <laughs> but it's giving time. And over the maybe about 25 years or so, we've been doing this, giving to our convention or maybe more, more than 25 years. We are the ones, every one of us, that give. It helps to boost and to do excellent work. Amen? I want you all to give from your heart. Give freely. Free will offering. Sow seed. Seed is something you don't put it in your pocket and have it there. It won't grow there. Amen. Sow seed in the ministry. Sow seed in the, in the church by giving your offering to bless this convention. You want to make it up in your mind that I want to give something tangible. Amen. Please do your best. Give something strong. Give something that we can look on it and we can hold it, and it can last long. Amen? So I'm just going to ask the church to stand. Everyone, remember now we have credit cards machine available. If you have your checkbook, you still can write your check made out to COGOP um, and put the amount that you purposely want to give. If we give from our heart tonight, God will bless us so much. But we need to do a sacrificial giving that the blessing will come. All right? So please do your best. There are bills to pay and it's us have to take care of it when we give. Give something strong and tangible that we can have something tonight to extend and it not just goes for bill but it goes for so much different things helping the youth camp and things like that so we need to do something strong tonight um, normally we would ask for us to start out with certain amount but time is going but once I ask you to give and you know you are here to give and you want to be a blessing, please give to the work of the Lord. God bless you. I'm going to pray this prayer, and then the musician will take over, and the ushers will give direction. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come to you this hour. We honor and adore your matchless name. We praise you, and we lift you up. Here are your people about to give from their heart lord you are the blesser that when we give you always bless and provide father so i'm asking you tonight as we all give from our heart lord you will in turn bless us in the name of jesus we pray amen and amen god bless you follow the direction of your ushers Come on, put those hands together. Come on. We're going to Africa tonight. Is that all right?
So we have to give that kind of consideration. But when we come to special meetings like these once per year, it is not just your regular weekend service or your midday service. This is convention. Amen. But I understand many of our people, by the time we hit 9.30, pocketbooks in hand. And I pray the Lord will help us that we make some sacrifice in worship, not rushing, not rushing, not. And I told you this will be a worshiping weekend, worshiping. So before uh, Minister David come, and then Pastor Shorter will come after the song to pray a release of God's anointing upon his servant as he's getting ready to deliver the word. I want to recognize Minister Ryan. And of course, he's our regional worship director all the way from Albany. Amen. Not just around the corner. Uh, we, we appreciate, we appreciate you, sir or gracing our convention with your presence. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, we, we, we put so much restriction. 
Because normally I would call and Pastor Beckford to say something. Then I would call and Brother Ryan to say something. That's what I, I'm accustomed to. But by the time I go through all that, it's 10 o'clock. And then the preacher have to come. So by the time we wrap up things, it's 12 o'clock. And that's a good time to end service. Midnight. Praise the Lord. Man, I'm not going to go any further. Jesus didn't come at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at midnight. Amen. Minister Dave Horn. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Out of your spirits, bless the Lord. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, bless the name of Jesus. things. Um, as you heard earlier, some of you were wondering where, why there was a visitor from Delaware. Well, I have news for the church tonight. That visitor is my visitor, and she's also my fiance. <laughs> Kayla, could you stand let the church see you? That's right, that's right. This is Kayla, my fiance. That's right. Praise the name of the Lord. My goodness. Praise God. I am happy tonight. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. And so I'm going to get right into ministry and song. Praise the Lord. Um, and right before I do that, I want to do something because I don't know if I'll have this chance again. With marriage comes movement. I will not tell you where I'm going, but I will be moving, not far. And so I just want to say to Queens on Long Island, all of the pastors, all of the ministers, all the churches that allowed me to come into your church and cause ruckus with your sound or do something to it, thank you. Thank you. I... Count it a privilege and an honor. I've worked about with all the pastors, Pastor Bickford for a time, Bishop Simpson, uh, Pastor Roman, Pastor Ashmead, and it has been a joy to serve the church here. And so I want to say thank you. Now, I made a promise to two pastors that when they get their new building, I will come and do sound. Hold me to that promise. I'm still coming. Amen. Anybody want to be planted higher? Anybody want to go higher? Anybody long for a higher ground? Praise the Lord. So I'm going to be ministering. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Pray for me as I sing.
Sing every day Still praying I on work bound Lord plant my feet On higher
voices sing it if it's really your prayer tonight. The glory of the Lord is here. The glory of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. And if you really want him, Hallelujah. sing it like you want him to fall afresh on you. Spirit of oh, Jesus. Holy. Yes. All of the rest on me, on me, on me, on me, spirit of the living God. Sing, break me, sing. Lose the atmosphere. Sing it one more time. Break me. Say, break. Sing it with your spirit. Yes, Lord. Walk through the room. Oh, spirit of Jesus. Oh. 
can you sing it one time, not any music? God, fall afresh tonight, and all of us, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, bless his holy name, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I come, no other help, no other source, Lord, we know. But tonight as we come in this corporate gathering, convention, we need you, Father. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. God Almighty, come in your power. Take resident. Take full control tonight. Bless every heart tonight. Touch the messenger. Let the word come forth with power. Let hearts and, and mind be touched tonight. In the name of Jesus. Souls to be saved. Souls to be sanctified. Souls to be filled with the power of God tonight. Touch Mighty God, use your servant in a mighty way that when he open his mouth, God, the word that will come, it will generate, oh God, it will touch, it will uplift, mighty God, it will give direction in the name of Jesus, it will heal, oh God, and transform lives in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit that is not belonging here. We take authority in the name of Jesus and we bind up the forces of darkness. We come against every spirit of doubt and we counteract it. In the name of Jesus, showers of blessing, your people as we are, we are hungry, we are thirsty, we need our cups to be filled with the blessing and with the word of Almighty God, fill our cups that we can declare I'm delivered, I can declare I'm healed. I can declare I am set free in the name of Jesus. Those among us who are not saved, my God, the word will come and will touch and stir the heart of your people. Help us, Lord, that those who are hanging on to a limb Mighty God will come in and stand, O oh Lord, under the banner of love in the name of Jesus. We ask of you to do what no one else can have done. Only your Father that can touch the heart, touch the mind, save to the atmos, use your servant, as he opened his mouth, mighty God, bless him 
in the name of Jesus. Hear our cry now as we look to you in Jesus' name. Let the word go forth. Let the word go forth. Let the word find lodging place into the heart of your people. Mighty God, that at the end of all of this, we can say it was good for us to be together. Somebody will be able to love better. My God in heaven, Jesus, we bind up those spirits. Release your sons and daughter in this place. Release your power in this place. My God, we don't want to just come and be numbers, mighty God. But I believe that something good is about to happen. Hallelujah. Jesus, turn Queens and Long Island. Turn it upside down. Shake the ground that we are standing on. That we will develop a better way of life. And we will walk worthy of the vocation with which we are being called. Not business as usual, but we are crying out for our children in the name of Jesus. Send help, mighty God, and store hearts and minds. Shake up this place, mighty God. Let your presence be felt again. In the name of Jesus, your messenger is already blessed. The word is already blessed. If he open his mouth, you promise to fill it with words. Words that we need. Strengthen this district. Strengthen the churches, my God. Strengthen the pastors and leaders. Let us all stand together as one unit. My God in heaven, store your people, I pray. Unity and to be unified in one spirit. One spirit. And it's the spirit of Almighty God. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Shall I so quicken the mortal body? Send help. Turn it around. That we will stand together. We are not just bridge gappers. You are bigger than that, Father. We want to stand under your divine providence and say, God's will be done. Not our will, but God will be done. Jesus. Have your way, Father. Your servant is in your care. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Glory to God. Praise his name. For the Lord is good. He is good. He is good. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord, Minister Nathan Blackwood. Would you receive him? this time. Come on, bless Jesus. Come on, lift up Jesus all over the room. Come on, come on. I know, I know, I know it's been a long day. I know it's been a long week. But isn't he worthy? Isn't he wonderful? Come on, use the beautiful instrument of your voice. Come on, shake yourself loose a little bit more. We're in the presence of the wise, powerful, almighty God. I know, I know it's been long. I feel the tiredness. I feel it. I, I, but I know God wants to say something to us. Lord, we, your people, have our cups turned up. 
We've come together from different places, from different delegations. Under the name of the Church of God of Prophecy, we're brothers and sisters coming from 10 different locations to hear one word. God wants to talk to us and God wants to meet us. Golly, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, let me be honest. There is such a weight of glory that is in this room. In spite of everything that's going on, in spite of everything that's going wrong in your life, I believe God is turning some things around. Oh God, God is doing something powerful in the midst of us. Look at somebody and say, there's a sweet anointing. Come on, prophesy. Speak. If you believe it, there's a sweet spirit. There is a promise of deliverance. There is a promise for breakthrough. There are to God, there are 10 and more churches watching and listening that are looking and listening with ears to the ground for breakthrough. There's a sweet spirit for breakthrough. Come on, somebody should reach up their hands and receive their healing, receive their deliverance. You don't have to wait until the other side of the preached word. But I believe, I believe even as we lift, we lift up the sound of glory. God is turning things around. Hours spent but the Spirit wants to speak strongly to us. That's why you're still here. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do something new, something strong, something powerful in the midst of us. Thank you, Jesus. So Holy Spirit, breathe. from the front row to the back row. Y'all who know my heart. Hallelujah. Something, oh God. Something powerful. I have just a few minutes to deliver this. But Bishop Simpson, I believe we need to hear the heart of God now, the mind of God right now. God wants to release his mind over his people again. I, 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 because, see, what I believe God is getting ready to deliver us from and set us up into is going to prepare us to take in the greatest harvest we've ever seen. There's an anointing right now to activate dormant gifts. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's an anointing. Mm. Because you've been praying and you've been waiting and you've been sowing, there's an anointing for breakthrough with your name on it, with your church's name on it. I don't know why. I, let, let me tell you how I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. As all the buildings I've been privileged to walk into, everyone except the new appointed building, I see the buildings getting ready to receive fire like the dove sat on the people on the day of Pentecost and beginning to release light from the rubble. What do you mean, preacher? There's been a debris, there's been a rubble that has kind of put a lid on our giftedness and our potential. But God wants to shake the rubble off your houses. God wants to shake the rubble off of our ministries. God wants to shake the rubble, hallelujah, off of our calling. Some of us have been sitting dormant 
in our callings because we're upset with God and his bride because we've not had our way. But God wants to do something in your heart. God wants to release a new wave of light. This weekend is about growing and walking in a newness of his light. I said, Lord, if you give me a few minutes to address you, your people, he said, talk to them from this text. From the fifth chapter of Ephesians. I know I gave you another text, but because time is fast, man, you could have kept playing. I'm, uh, y'all go. Uh, the, 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 the wisdom that God is calling. See, we are hearing a clarion call, but God wants to talk to us about the how to respond. We can hear the sound, but if you're not conditioned to respond, it will be just another time of weekend. And you may not want to say it, but there's a strong sense that you don't just want another weekend. You don't just want another good Thursday and Friday and Saturday. You, 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 you're, you're here because you're saying, Lord, we need you to sit like a dove on our houses again. And Lord, we need you to sit and rest on us. If that's your prayer tonight, just say, Lord, rest on us and let your light shine through us, in us, around us. Hallelujah. The song says, walk in the light, beautiful light, come where the dew drops. And then it turns into a prayer. It says, shine all around us by day and by night. Not my light, but Jesus. Okay, we have a good church tonight. Jesus, the light of the world. Protocol's been established. We honor the grace gifts that God has placed among us and is surrounding us. I just want to read for you Ephesians 5, verses 15 to 17. And the ESV tonight. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of your time. For most of you, your King James or New King James says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Let me stop right there. Romans 13. Let me just read it so we just get right into it. 11 says, Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now when we first believe. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime. Not in orangies or drunkenness. Not in sexual morality or sensuality. Not in quarreling and jealousy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. 
to gratify its desires. Ten churches, one theme, one call. It's one call, but it has to take on ten different lives of its own. Because what God wants to download to 234 may not be good enough for 194-15 Linden Boulevard. It might be different, and it's going to be different for what is mandated for New Hope, House of Grace, Grace Tabernacle, South Ozone Park, Windex, West Babylon, West Hempstead. It's different, but there's still one call. There is one roar that's roaring from heaven, Lady Henry, that is calling for our attention. All activity is not necessarily accomplishment or productivity. Therefore, Paul advises us, I'm just going to get into it because I don't want to hold you up long, into three key things. As we come together, I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to examine how we walk. Because in the beginning of that chapter, Dr. Petrid, it says, be imitators of Christ. Hallelujah. Our first call is not to our gifts, nor to our churches. Now, in yester generation or yester years, we got it twisted. That if we were in the right house, we were called. But if you look at the life and the ministry of Jesus, Jesus called even his disciples first to himself. He said in Matthew 4, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Our first call is not to our spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. You're gifted, but that's not the first place of your calling. You're talented, but that's not the first place of your calling. Your first calling is to God. And if you miss God, it doesn't matter how many services we have in this building. It doesn't matter how many, so hallelujah, how much services we have in the next building or in the next place. If you miss the call of God, then even our gatherings are useless. If you miss the heart and the mind of God, we're just another tinkling cymbal or a sounding brass. The first call is to look at how we walk. Let's reflect and analyze our lives. The Bible admonishes us as imitators of Christ to follow him, to follow his way. Proverbs 4.18 but the path of the righteous is like the dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until day. The path of a person's life reflects, hallelujah, excuse me, the path of a person refers to the way that a person lives. And according to the Proverbs, the wise person's way shines brighter and brighter as they grow in God's light. Is our way of growing brighter and brighter because the sun is shining through us? Is that a more pertinent thing? Or are we just stuck on the status quo and being all right with attending church? Light naturally travels and travels at a crazy speed, y'all. You don't know how much Light is moving with just having these lights on now. But the light is traveling, illuminating the space. If the lights were to go off in here, you would say, what happened, Bishop? Did you pay the bill or not? But we must first answer the call to God to be light in the dark world. What does it mean to be saved? It's more than just the songs or things we pray. More than just the way to heaven. Now, don't get me wrong. We still ought to preach and encourage one another with the words of hope of heaven. 
but we have a work to do between now and heaven. Oh God. When Jesus came across the blind man, you heard it last night from Pastor Beckford, they thought it was an issue of sin that caused the blindness. But what, but, but what amazed me what Jesus said, Jesus said, no, 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 it's not about what they did, but rather it's an opportunity for the glory and the works of the Lord to be worked through him. I want us to analyze and think about how we're walking. Are we walking, hallelujah, in the greater power, in the greater works that he long promised us in the book of John? Is the breath of the Almighty leading us into the greater works. Yesteryears, we had a theme called greater works. God is still calling us to greater works. God is calling us to walk in the light and to grow in the light. Why? Because Romans 8 reminds us that the earth is groaning. The earth is crying. Oh, I wish I had a church. The earth is waiting for the manifestations of sons. The earth is waiting for the bride to be the bride. But if we're caught up in things that are not relevant, the bride can't be the bride. I know it's important to our ministries in this day and age to master or begin to master the usage of technologies. I'm for it. But if, glory to God, help me, help me, help me, help me say it right. But if the breath of the Almighty isn't in the house, it doesn't matter if your gear is state of the arts or hand-me-downs. Without the breath of the Almighty, hallelujah, cities won't be changed. Regions won't be changed. Territories won't be changed. I, I'm all for good church, but if the lives aren't being changed, would you rather another year of tinkling symbol? No. Oh, Jesus. Would I rather, oh God, thank you, Lord. Would I rather another year of just going through the motions? It's good seeing my friends and cousins and all of them and everybody from different churches. But when we close the book on Sunday, you have to carry a sound with you. You have to carry a life-changing, life-altering sound to the cities, hallelujah, of St. Albans, the cities of Ozone Park, the city of Far Rockaway, the city of Hempstead, the city west of Hempstead, in Roosevelt, in Babylon, in Wyandanche, there must be a beginning. If our frequency is off, light's gonna be off, help me Jesus. I believe God has been having us around certain mountains. Not because we're afraid, but we have not been getting it. I have one shot at this, right? We have great things, but we're not getting it. We're not getting the mind of God, but what God wants to do, because there's a hope in it all, God wants to get our attention to recognize that there's darkness all around us. And there's something in you that's the solution to the darkness of the age. There's something, you, come on, there's something in me. Hallelujah. There's something in you. Come on, talk to somebody and say, there's a power that's working in you. It's his power. Come on, talk to some believers. It's his power that wants to work in you. As you're saying it, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the stirring. I'm seeing the grace gifts. I'm seeing the pray, a hallelujah. Come on, look at somebody behind you and say there's a power, there's a greater power that wants to come alive in you. Come on, speak all over this room. There's a greater power that wants to come alive in you. And when the power comes, 
it's not just for me to shout. It's not just for me to have a new dance. But it's power for impact, not power for popularity. Because we're popular for doing church. We're popular for having good assemblies. We're popular for having good conventions. We're popular for having good Sunday service. But are we making impact? My home church know what it is. Y'all pray for me. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. We want to make impact. Uh, you can have church, but if you're not having impact, shut it down. Lock it down. Uh, oh God, uh, my prayer is, is that God help us not to just have church, but have impactful church. What impactful church? Church where the sinner comes to repentance. The kind of church where healing is happening for the physical body and for the mind and for the soul. An impactful church is a church led by the Holy Ghost. An impactful church will know when to sit back and let the bridegroom minister to it. An impactful church is a church that will give to the needy. An impactful church! Only if you want it. Speak to five people around you. Help me preach and say, I want to be an impactful church. Come on, touch five people. This is not church as usual. Minister Nelson, the sons of God. Wants to come forth, but if you're gonna stay at the level of having regular church, God will step over you, God will pass you by. You can stay in the brief all you want, but I want the glory. Okay, I want the power to fall on me. I want the power to fill me so I can witness. I can witness to my neighbor. Hallelujah. I want the impact where my sons and daughters don't have to question the God I serve because I'm churching on Sunday, but I'm a demon Monday through Saturday. I want the impact of God hits you. Your house don't have to wonder if you know him. Oh, glory to God. When you let the Holy Spirit impact how you live, it's church on Monday. It's church on Tuesday. It's church on Wednesday. It's church on Thursday. I'm not talking about going to church and having activity. But Pastor Brown, I'm talking about the thing that's stirring inside of me. Oh God, uh, that tell me wherever God will send me, there's an assignment. Uh, God, lift me out of the expectations from assumption and let me be focused on my assignment. Uh, let me be focused on what you've called me to be. Let me be focused on who you've called me to be because this is here's the truth. God doesn't want us to just be a doing church. God wants us to be a being church. Everybody that's in the pneumatology class on Monday should have said amen loud. Because it's in him we live and move and have our being. I'm speaking to some churches. I'm speaking to, I'm, I, I'm trying so hard. Lord have mercy. I, 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 it keeps coming back to me. The dove wants to sit and rest on your house and rest on your ministry and rest on every department. But are you willing to come into alignment with heaven? Are you willing to come into the frequency of heaven? You see, you can't want new wine and live in old wine skin. You cannot want a new wave of the move of God and live in contentment with old things. There's a difference in having a right relationship with the ancient landmark but we don't live there. I know about the 
old ship of Zion because it's a foundation. But we are, God help me, God, we have to move past just knowing the foundation. God is calling us into maturity. God, we just sang about higher ground. Don't you think, hallelujah, as light projects higher and higher, that's why sunrises are a beautiful thing because what, oh God, what was under the power of the night has to bow to the rising of the sun. <laughs> when the sun rises, the watch of the darkest part of the night ceases and light has come. Can I, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Can I just say, can I say it as, as, as he gave it to me? All I heard is arise and shine. For your light has come. And the glory, this is not just the Kogop heritage scripture. It's a way of life. We always ought to be arising and shining. Watch how we walk. Watch how we live. Make the best use of our time because the days are evil. We don't have to quote 2 Timothy 3 to know the times that we're in. We know we're in perilous times. Now what is the church going to do about it? Mm. We've been reactive for too long and God's called us to move past reacting and going back to our core values and knowing our core values. Maybe what needs to happen, maybe, is that we need to sit down for a couple of weeks and relearn fundamental things. Our core value. Because people are coming to God, Lady Roman, but they don't know the way. They don't know the core values of our faith. I'm not, you, I'm not even talking about houses. I'm talking about of our faith. We have to be okay, hallelujah, with making sure that we're not just giving good numbers, but not having impactful life. I submit to you that a part of redeeming the time is making use of the present moment and listening to the Holy Spirit about present moments and what's to come. Because if we don't maximize the present moment, because presently God is speaking, presently God is talking to you about some things, presently God is talking to me about some things, presently God is writing, is writing some things on your heart again. And it can only be redeemed when we obey. <laughs> Redeeming the time. Time is only redeemed, Lady Hutchinson, when we obey what he's called us to do. That's why a lot of you believe that so many ministries and so many peoples has passed us by. I know you won't say amen, but some of you said amen in your mind. I'm not saying it in a comparative or competitive way. I'm, what I'm trying to say is that, that, that some of us see the lid over our ministries but aren't willing to shine the light through the debris because even when the lid feels dark, if you're light, light travels and when enough lit lamps come together, what was once dark, what was once your lid, can be lifted at the power of the light. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm coming down. We've got to know what the will of the Lord is. I'm out of time. Mm -hmm. I think about John chapter 4, <laughs> when the woman of Samaria encountered Jesus. 
The Bible says that she dropped her pot and she had one call message to preach. Come see a man. Something happened on the, when was the last time something happened on the inside of you that you couldn't contain it and you didn't want to let other brethren know? It's not because you don't love him, but you know they know or they should know. But you want to tell somebody that may not know, you've got to come see a man. <laughs> We've been having tent crusades and tent revivals and all these crusades and our cities have not come to see a man yet. But this weekend, but this weekend, we are saying, Lord, we're hearing your call. And we will run to come see a man. Maybe a few of us need to run, come see that man again. But that's not the part that blessed me about that story. You know what blessed me? The very reason Jesus sent his disciples away and said, I have need to go to Samaria. When they came back to him, Jason, and they brought him the food. Jesus said, I'm not hungry anymore. The disciples said, hold on, isn't that why you sent us away? We, not, we weren't even supposed to travel through Samaria to get to where we're getting to. And we get to Samaria and you send us away for food. We come back, we obey you, you know, Jesus. We, that, that's what we do. We brought the food and you don't want it. But Jesus said something powerful in verse 34 of that same chapter. He said, my meat or my food is to do the will of him that sent me to accomplish his work. We must work the works of him who sent us while we're in the dispensation of day. Because as you heard, the night is coming. There's one more cry to be cried and it's that midnight cry. But before the midnight cry, God will call our attention to what's going on around us. I really believe that God wants us to put our ears to the ground again in the place of prayer and say, Holy Ghost, what are you saying to our house? What are you saying to our ministry? What are you saying to us collectively? There's so much anointing in this room. Can I say it? Can I say it? Is it all right? Can I just say it? I just saw it. There's so much anointing in here when it comes together. We can take the whole of Eastern Long Island and be a witness for the Lord in places where we're not planted yet. I know that sounds scary, but there's an anointing not everywhere in Queens have been evangelized. God is calling us to send the light. Who do you think is supposed to send the light? We didn't think about it. It's us. The hymn is a call to us. There's a call come ringing. I'm coming down. Or oh, the restless waves. He's calling you to send the light. But 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 the part that the verse that spoke to me, he said, We've heard the Macedonian call today. That means there's cities tonight. Uh, you can think of places that need the influence of the power of God by the Holy Ghost. I'm thinking of, oh God, I'm thinking about Amityville. Am I allowed to say that? I'm thinking beyond Babylon. I'm thinking beyond our last borders. I'm thinking Freeport. Yes, we have a church. I'm thinking places in Queens like Astoria. 
I'm thinking about not just having one type of one style of church. Maybe this is visionary talk, huh? God, yeah, you got to help me. I've learned something about vision. Vision is supposed to lead the leader. And when you stop chasing the vision of God, you open up yourselves to plateau. And if not, you begin to decline. But God tonight wants to reinvigorate our eyes to see. Why do you think Jesus talked about being the light of the world concerning a blind man? A blind man don't know what light is until he encounters it. He only knew the sun was out because his parents led him. But when Jesus opened his eyes, you see, I'm sure how powerful light is. How did he know that men could look like trees? Light shone in his eyes for the first time. And Jesus knew that the work wasn't done. He told the man, go wash again. And this is where God is bringing us to. God wants us to wash again. So we're not just seeing men like trees. <laughs> but we're seeing men as how Jesus sees them. You see, our problem is we're looking at men through one lens. And we're not letting the light show us the possibilities. But tonight, God wants to shift our vision. God wants to illuminate our path. How then shall we pray? Let's stand. I went far beyond my time. Oh, Everyone that can stand. Let's rest to our feet. The Holy Spirit is calling us as a district to another yes. I asked the Lord a question. He said, how shall, I asked him, how shall we pray tonight? How shall we pray? How shall, God, I, maybe my inner leader kicks in. Just I, I, I like to facilitate well. I try to. Because good leaders are supposed to do that. And the Lord said, facilitate by inviting those that are hearing the call to come up higher in him. Come first. Now, I know how altar calls can get in bigger settings. We wait for the first response people you think is weaker than you. But if you're hearing and sitting under this word, it doesn't matter the strength or the facade of strength. Now this is personal. If you're hearing his voice and he's saying, come up higher in the light, I want to open up this altar to you first. As our ministers position ourselves for prayer, it doesn't matter what you do in the church. And because God's calling you higher doesn't mean you're living in sin. We got to dispel that myth. <laughs> when God calls a people higher, it means that where you are is not good enough any longer for what God is calling you into. So it's okay. You, you, it's a, believers are supposed to come. If you're a leader and you hear the call of God to come higher, will you give God another yes again? There's no shame. We come against condemnation and shame. God wants you to respond to him. Oh, glory, glory, glory. God wants us to respond to him. I know I should have called the ministers up front first, but we're going to just flow together. Forgive me. I know better. I'm, I'm doing a whole workshop on it tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> but, but if you hear him, God is calling you higher. God is calling you to another yes. And I know sometimes yes can be frustrating because you're, you're anticipating people to affirm your yes. Oh God, hallelujah. But, but, but can I tell you something? 
When God calls you, it doesn't even matter sometimes who's the person above you. And I'm not trying to say it to be disrespectful or dishonorable to protocol. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is God is calling us higher. If you're waiting for your church to come, for you to be called higher, you'll miss him. And you'll miss this. You know why? Because I believe the Holy Ghost wants to do a deep work on the inside of us. Because there's something that's been inhibiting our yes. There's something that has been blockading us. But I believe tonight, I believe tonight, as our souls say yes to him, I believe the Lord is going to deliver you. Oh, I see that inferiority complex being lifted off of some people's right now. You saw yourself as a grasshopper. <laughs> but tonight, the Lord wants to remind you that you have an anointing in you to take down giants. My God, my God. Holy Spirit, let's get ready to minister together. My soul is calling me to another yes. My soul is calling me to another. I can't move past the next point. Don't let pride make you don't let pride make you miss this moment with God. You can't afford to go back to your ministries more burnt out than when you came. Come and receive fresh fire. Oh, yes. And this other call, this one, this one shocked me. Said, you know what, let's deal with this first. Because God is calling people higher in the sense of God wants to activate you tonight. Maybe that's what's happening with us now. Maybe, okay, I get it, Lord. Got you. You know, to activate somebody, and for those that are in my class, you'll, you're getting a little foretaste of Monday. God will activate by impartation. Paul talked about the importance of laying hands. Do not neglect the gift of God in you that was given to me by the laying on of hands. So anybody that's working the altar, I want you to lift your hands first. God's going to work the altar before we get into prayer. I want you to pray over your hands right now and ask the Holy Spirit to minister to my hands as I deposit or as I impart the life of the Holy Ghost into my fellow brothers and sisters. And once you're finished praying, let's begin to flow together. And let's pray for our brothers and sisters. There's, there's, there's an impartation God wants to give because your people, your sons and your daughters are saying yes. So once you finish praying, once you finish receiving, maybe some of you are here because you want the Lord to touch you first. I like that. You got to be first partaker before you can be a, a, a giver. Be first partaker. Holy Spirit, even now, we stretch our hands up to you. And now for those that are at the altar has responded to the voice, lift up your hands and begin to say, Lord, I say yes to you again. And begin, let that be the opening of your prayer. Lord, I say yes to you. There's some places God is getting ready to call you into. There's some things God is getting ready to unlock in you. Oh God, there's some things God wants to, wants to birth. But it's contingent on your yes. Oh, Father, Father, come on, lift those hands and begin to talk to him. Don't, 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 I, I gave you the intro. Father, we say yes. Father, we open our hearts to you. Father, speak to those stubborn places in us. Speak to the stubborn places in our heart. Father, you're calling us higher in you. Father, we represent places, regions, territories. Father, we say yes to you now. Holy Spirit, oh God, 
God, oh God, oh God. Oh, there's a river getting ready to burst out of you. That for some of you, you're one prayer away. Come, let's begin to minister together as the Spirit leads. Let's, let's, let's minister to our brothers and sisters. Come on, begin to flow, begin to flow. Come on, begin to flow as the Spirit leads you. Father, we say yes. Father, Father, refresh, refill, revive. Revive your daughter. Come on. As she says yes to you. One more time, breathe. Breathe. Breathe the breath of life. Put on my Monday. Father, as she answered the call, Father, I hear the prayers that she prayed for her family. Father, I hear the prayers she prays for her home. Father, I hear the prayers. Father, I hear the prayers of her heart that she prayed privately. Father, as she says yes again to you, begin to answer, begin to answer, begin to deliver, begin to deliver. We say yes, as she says yes, Father, I pray for her home. Father, deliver her home. Break through to her home. Break through to her life. I pray in the name of Jesus. Do it for her, do it for her now. Do it in her day, do it in her ministry. Come on, Zion, come on. There's a yes, there's a yes. You know my mother, As she says yes. I pray for a new strength. I pray for a new strength. I pray for a new fire. God, she has history with you. God, you've used her to be a sower. God, you've used her in the years past to deposit your life into the life of children and youth. Father, give her one more touch. Father, she belongs to you. Father, I pray tonight that you Holy Spirit would move move over her again ah, move over her again breathe new strategies breathe new life I pray for her team I pray for those that will work with her I pray Holy Spirit uh, that the vision that you've given her many a years ago bring it back to life for uh, us and bring it with her today's wind fresh wind fresh wind fresh wind come on Zion come on Zion Come on, Zion, come on, Zion. Fresh wind, fresh wind. Holy Spirit, fresh wind. Father, I pray. Open up her ears to the next dimension of her calling in you. Hallelujah, open up her ears to the next dimension of the calling that you have for her life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And she says yes to you. And she says yes to you. you 
called her to. Church, revive your church. 
We need revival, Lord. Holy Ghost, we need revival. No one else can bring it but you. Real revival comes from you. So, Lord, we look to you. We look to you. We look to you, Lord, we look to you. The Lord is working. The Lord is working. Let me tell you tonight. The Lord is working. Church of God, He is here. He knows what we need. He will not disappoint us.
Come on, lift your hand and give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Give him praise for what he has done. Give him praise for what he has done. The Lord has done great things tonight. I claim it in the name of Jesus. The Lord has done great things. Great things. Powerful, powerful. Hallelujah. Thank God for his presence. Thank him for the Holy Ghost. We give him glory. We pray for this. We prayed for this. We prayed for this. There's going to be greater outpouring. For God will not disappoint us. He's not a man that he should lie. And if you hunger and thirst after his righteousness, you shall be filled. There's no need for us to be superficial. When the real thing is there for us. The real thing is there for us. Church doesn't have to be superficial. The real thing is available. Us. We don't need no count. We don't need no pretenses. We don't need that. The real power is in the room. The real anointing is with us. And we are thankful. Praise God. We're going to close off this powerful, powerful segment. We're asking the Holy Spirit to keep working. Even in our traveling, keep speaking. Even in our sleeping, give us visions and revelations. We have to get it right have to get it right then he, he will make your sleep sweet so you can rise tomorrow morning and don't say you are scheduled for the afternoon this is once per year this is our convention let's not be selective when your spirit speaks with my whole heart I will agree that trust the Spirit will speak to you. You need to be in these workshops. You need to be more equipped. The church and community outreach. Relational evangelism, social media technology, altar workers workshop. Four workshops will be going on tomorrow in the uh, the annex building across the street for those of you that might not have any interest in any of these workshops but you are here then we just don't want you to sit around engage in prayer in the sanctuary but we are not going to be idle I beg of you 
If you don't want to be in the workshops, come in the main sanctuary and pray. Hallelujah. This is our time to receive. But we can only receive by virtue of obedience. Hallelujah. Let us rise as we conclude. Praise God. We trust God for. Father, we want to thank you on tonight for the leading of your Holy Spirit and the endowment of your power upon your people. Lord, we just couldn't do it of ourselves. But it is you that work it in us both to do your will or to will and to do your good pleasure. Lord, as we are about to leave this room, we pray your presence will continue to be with us. Let our destination, Lord, be a safe one. Bring us back at the appointed time. Revive refreshed renewed having heard your voice the clarion call and we are responding and we are saying yes we are saying yes yes to your will we give you praise We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. He is here, children. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. See you on tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. For those of you that are going to the workshop, when you just go straight there and park and leave your car, don't move it. Once you park in that lot, let it stay there until the end of the service. Lunch will be provided. So you don't have to walk with food. Lunch will be provided. Fish dinner, 20. Chicken dinner, brown stew, curry chicken, 15. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.